Hello there, I'm Mark. I work in the fundraising department at NRAS and I've also lived with juvenile idiopathic arthritis since I was eight years old. And this afternoon I'm here talking to Con, who's the Government and Policy Affairs Manager, and we're here to talk about the Green Paper. So, Con, just to start off with, what exactly is a green paper? Well, a green paper comes from government when they, when they don't yet know what they want to do on a topic, but they know they want to find out more. So it's a very early um, report on their ideas and their proposals on any particular topic, and it's designed to provoke discussion, and it involves members of parliament, that's who it's presented to, and any relevant organisations, and in fact the wider public as well, if they'd like to get involved too. Okay, and the specific green paper we've been working on ourselves here at NMAS, yeah. what is this specifically? Uh, well, I've got a copy here for you. Um, this is handily kept in a green folder so we know what it is. It's Improving Lives, the Work, Health and Disability Green Paper. And this has come about um, after kind of several years of discussion from government where they, they want to look at what it's like to be in employment if you're living with a disability or a long-term health condition, including RA and JIA. And so they are trying to get an answer to the question of what can government do and what can government ask and encourage other people to do. So that includes employers and it includes individuals themselves who need to be empowered to uh, do what they need to make their own lives better as well. Okay, why are the government interested in this topic right now? Yes, well I mean it's not a new topic of concern if you're somebody who lives with um, RA or JIA. I mean you yourself have, have been through several different yes. jobs and, and different challenges in each of those um, workplaces I'm sure. But the government now, after many years of talk, have perhaps realised that that more affirmative action is needed. The 2015 Conservative Party manifesto, which delivered David Cameron a small majority, talked about halving the disability employment gap, and I'll talk about that phrase in a minute. But at the current rate of progress, it will take 200 years to get there. And so I think they realised that, wow, we need to actually take some stock and do something if we're gonna get there. Now that phrase, halving the disability employment gap, it, it can, it can be a bit intimidating, it can sound um, as if it's very 1980s, get on your bike and get to work. But the idea is, and the reason behind it, most people who live with a long-term health condition and want to work are not in work. Um, so this is not about telling people who just don't want to work or simply are unable to work, that they have to, but it's about enabling people who do want to work regardless of health condition, to do so. Okay, so what are the specific big ideas? Yeah, well I think that the biggest idea here is about moving away from the black and white concept of people being either well or unwell. And now that's a, an age old idea in a way that, you know, you are either sick or you're well and you, you can either work or you can't, but actually in our modern economy, modern workplaces, you know, we're not all in the factories anymore of Victorian era and everything is a little bit more flexible. So you should be able to find some way of continuing to work if you want to. Absolutely. And I think the other big topics that are being addressed are um, looking just at flexibility, looking at what can employers do to make just life a little bit better for those people. Okay. How have NMAS been involved? Yeah, well, I mean, as, as I mentioned, we've, we've, had, like, we've, we've known about this for a long time. We've known that it's one of the biggest issues for our membership and our supporters is getting to work if they want to, about being meaningfully occupied and not being abandoned just because you've got this diagnosis of RA or JIA. And as a young organisation, one of the first reports we published um, in 2007 was on the topic of employment and RA. And we made some big recommendations there on the basis of some pretty shocking findings. One of which was that the majority of people who get an RA diagnosis leave the workplace within five years. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem as if much has changed in that regard. We would actually repeat that survey late in 2017 to get some more up-to-date stats. 
but we've been feeding in that information based on the evidence we have and on loads of anecdotal stories for many years. More recently, we've been involved in the expert advisory group to the government on work and health. Our chief executive, Elsa, has attended meetings with senior business leaders from Barclays, Sainsbury's and several other charity representatives and she's been talking on behalf of people with RA, JIA and other long-term conditions that have similarities that might fluctuate or be progressive and really getting our voice at the top table. Okay, so it sounds as if what you want to do is to try and get the opinions from us, people like myself who has a long-term health condition and our members. So how exactly do we get involved? Well, you're right. I mean, NRAS is a patient-led organisation. Um, we are the voice of people with RA and JIA, and we are involved at so, you know, in so many places that we should be proud of ourselves for having reached. Um, we are keen that we take in on board fresh comment um, from people um, with RA and JIA who are affected by these um, issues in the workplace. And so there will be a short survey available on our website, which is perhaps a little easier to uh, complete than the 98 pages of very complex questioning that you get if you go to the government website. But we're also going to do our response to all of those questions on behalf of you all, having taken on board what you tell us in the, the more concise survey and taking on board the information that we've gained over many years. Excellent. Oh, thank you.